Today, I had the pleasure of speaking with Steve Sabiak from Vallejo Pharma. Steve, how are you today? Very good, Tracy. Nice to be back. So you just put out, you're putting out, you've got a, just a magnanimous news flow of real news, Steve. So it's really nice to get an update from you. And just this last week, you announced a deal with Montreal Heart Institutes uh, uh, with a Hesperidin coronavirus clinical trial. But this is, the, this is the part of the news release we liked. You said that your study will evaluate the effect of Hesperidin on COVID-19 symptoms and its ability to reduce disease severity and the need for hospitalization in patients. Okay, tell us about this news release, please. Well, we, uh, we've been researching uh, Hesperidin in particular with a small biotech company out of Montreal for the last nine months, 10 months. Uh, we came up with a formulation. The Institute was uh, presented with all the clinical background data, 20 years worth of data. They really liked what they saw. They liked the fact that this is a natural product, that this has not a very good safety profile, but very interesting potential efficacy. And as a result of this uh, significant literature review, they decided to undertake the trial. We manufactured the product for them. It's a Hesperico capsules and the trial uh, kicked off yesterday. And you'll start seeing it more in social media uh, coming in the days to follow as they start recruiting patients for the trial. So there's a lot of competitors out there, so much so that, you know, we were discussing Twitter prior to this actual interview, but Twitter literally and Google are, are blocking a lot of announcements having to do with COVID-19, even though there's some really amazing companies that are out there. So getting your, your story out there with this particular challenge is, is kind of, you know, how are you dealing with it? Well, you're, you're you know, dead right on that. There's been so many uh, molecules put forward as potentially helping uh, or reducing or curing or what have you. Um, I think we have to look at the fact that the Montreal Heart Institute is a leading institute. They've done a number of trials, a number of trials even with COVID. And for them to continue to be interested in what is really a fairly simple molecule at the top, at the, or, and we actually call it a medicinal ingredient in, uh, on, our, uh, on our packaging, um, is, is a testament to the many hours of research that independent researchers from around the world have done demonstrating that asperidine could have a very positive effect on patients that are symptomatic with COVID-19. So I think this is, you know, we're not saying that other products aren't better, beneficial, can be used or what have you. We're saying this is a safe potential treatment for or, or reducing the symptoms of uh, coronavirus. In addition, it's great immune support product. That's just core uh, value. Um, no side effects, a dollar a day, don't need a prescription, you can get it at your pharmacy. Uh, and it has a, a lot of benefits for, for patients that feel that their immune system needs some protection and some assistance. All right. So we talk to, with all those Reddit investors, we get a lot of young people, our, our website numbers are going through the roof and they're going, you know, and I'm saying, okay, you know, you have to take some time to research the company that you're buying the shares for and you need to be evaluating, you know, looking at their market valuation. Can you comment to our audience out there about your current market valuation and where your share price is and how you feel about that presently? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, as much as we've talked about Asperco, Asperco is not the only product that we have, and it's probably not going to even be the biggest product that we have. We expect to launch a product in uh, early May called uh, Redesca, which is a blood thinner and has a, we, we believe, great market potential, 30 plus million, 40 plus million type uh, top line revenues. Uh, our market cap today is somewhere between 65 and 70 million. And I think what that does not reflect is the future. So I'll use the hockey analogy that I think uh, our great Wayne Gretzky put forward. Don't look where the puck is, look where the puck's going. And the same thing, Look, you can't look at our valuation today and look at our revenues today. Our revenues are slated to almost triple in the current fiscal year, which ends October 21st. And I think you have to say, well, what will the valuation be as these revenues become uh, realize and as the, as we're able to announce uh, improving quarterly uh, revenues and earnings. And I think that's what, what investors have to look at in the future, not so much the past or the present. 
Well, having watched a lot of hockey, <laughs> I think uh, understanding where that puck is going is, is not my area of expertise. However, one of our analysts wrote, revenue forecasters are triple, just like you just said, as Vallejo benefits from last year's successes. When should we anticipate our next revenue updates or quarterly updates for all those shareholders out there that are watching Vallejo Pharma and for some new ones that are putting you on their grid? Well, we'll be presenting our, our announcing our fourth quarter and annual revenues. Again, we have an October year end. We'll be doing so next Wednesday. Uh, then the first quarter will be coming out several weeks after. I think where the you'll see the real revenue jump, uh, it will start in the second quarter. The first quarter is going to be a good quarter, but the second quarter you'll see that real demarcation from from our past. So last year's gross top line gross was about eight point five million or so. Uh, this year we're looking at somewhere as 20, 25 million. Uh, it's always difficult in COVID. It does affect the pharma industry, but like it's affected many industries. Uh, but we have a very strong feeling about this growth and it's principally from the growth of our existing pro uh, products, as well as Asperco, Redesco, which we'll be launching uh, and potentially some other products that could come on board uh, later on this summer. Okay, well, we're following Redesca. Redesca, is that correct? Did I pronounce it correct? Yeah. Um, so uh, you just also, I mean, you you do put out uh, regular news releases and, and they're crunchy, real good news. So you also just put out in the last couple of weeks uh, that Redesca receives positive recommendation for public reimbursement in Quebec. Would you like to give us an update on that? Yeah, well, the you know what people or, or your viewers need to uh, sort of uh, accept or understand is that drugs are, are, you know, help a lot of diseases, but someone has to pay for these drugs. And typically it's one of two pairs. It's a private insurance companies if you're working for a company that has a private plan or it's the public the provincial governments themselves. And roughly the market is split 50-50 between the two. So it's very important to get the provinces to agree to pay for a drug. Uh, Redesca is the type of drug that will save the Canadian healthcare system quite a bit of, of dollars. It's called a biosimilar. So it's similar to a, an existing biological drug. Um, and the this first uh, Quebec uh, acceptance is, is the first of what we expect to be 10 all across Canada. Uh, Quebec, in this case, had to be the first mover. We're based in Quebec, but it, it's it's the, the report itself talks a lot about how good of a dossier manufacturing efficacy of the drug. Uh, and we expect that to uh, to continue, as I said, across Canada. And it's, it's a critical, critical step in any drugs. Uh, commercial success in Canada is to get provincial reimbursement. And to, so to, to get it early as we have and, and the interactions we're having with the other provinces, very favorable. And I think this bodes well for the launch of Redesca uh, in, you know, sort of the end of the spring uh, this year. Well, Steve, will you do me a favor and do an, an update with us at Investor Intel at least once a month, once, once every other six weeks so we can make sure our investors are following you because you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that will be surprised to know that, you know, last year you had a 230% stock price gain. They're going to want to make sure that they're following you, trying to keep up with you. Make sure we know where that hockey puck is headed. I, I, Tracy, I promise you we will. It's always a pleasure to be on your, your program and to talk to your investor base. And uh, we look forward to being back shortly. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Steve.